Just met in Chicago. Uh, and the conclusion, really, that we have reached at Light Reading in the last 12 months is that our industry is no longer just enabling enterprise and telecom communications. The companies you guys work for are now powering the next phase of globalization. And that really is the big theme of this year's big communications event, exploring the opportunities and the risks uh, that are presented by this unprecedented virtualization-driven worldwide economic shift. Today's service providers aren't just building networks, they're literally creating a ubiquitous virtualized global infrastructure that ultimately will empower all 7 billion inhabitants of the planet, wherever they are, to not simply communicate, but to participate, to innovate, and to... He's anxious to see change. Our smart city proposal will create connections and ladders of opportunity for everyone. Denver's plan starts with an intelligent data ecosystem which will gather information from RTD, police and private companies and make it available to anyone. It is our spirit and soul which is on the line right now, a city at a tipping point. In all thy sons that last phrase you just heard could change. New on Wake Up, if you've been any favors game or pretty much any game around here, you've heard the Canadian National Anthem. And as Teresa said, the, the anthem could change. It's a move that could make it more gender neutral. This is all happening, of course, as the uh, transgender debate continues around our country and across the world. In other news, the largest earthquake drill in Northwest history. Breaking news overseas, a deadly terror attack. At least four people killed when two gunmen opened fire at a crowded shopping mall in Tel Aviv, Israel. A heart-wrenching moment on the Hill today. MP Maril Belanger, his health in steep decline, appeared in the House to save his private member's bill. The bill will change the national anthem. And the lyrics to our national anthem will be a hot topic before the celebrations. Gender-neutral lyrics for O Canada are up for debate. Colleagues say Belanger's desire to see the lyrics of O Canada changed from In All Thy Sons Command to In All of Us Command has consumed much of his energy and focus these past months, even as his condition continued to deteriorate. We have some incredible images to show you tonight of a rare and violent encounter in nature. An amateur photographer from British Columbia captured a real-life angry birds battle between two iconic symbols representing Canada and the United States. Have a look at these uh, pretty interesting photos. The showdown starts with a bald eagle swooping down and landing on top of a Canada goose. Friday morning, a truly rare encounter. Camping on Spider Lake, Lisa Bell captures a bald eagle challenging a Canada goose. That, well, that was a once in a lifetime. I can honestly say in 30 years I've never seen an eagle, a uh, uh, bald eagle, take a Canada goose. Swooping down, the eagle seems to dominate the goose and pins it to the earth with dagger-like talons. 
first gender neutral bathrooms in some schools and now gender neutral graduation gowns. But now Schreiber High School in Port Washington breaking with one of its traditions. At graduation, gowns will be gender neutral. No more whites for girls, blue for boys. The superintendent says it goes well beyond the transgender issue. The time has come to no longer separate students by gender and to demonstrate a more inclusive practice at graduation. He predicts next year at this time, gender neutral cap and gowns will be a nationwide trend. In the world we live in, we set up two distinct categories, man and woman, that everyone must choose between. But that doesn't actually reflect the full diversity of the human experience. Within the categories of man and woman, there is incredible diversity of gender expression. And some people, like me, don't really feel good in either category. Instead of choosing, we want to live in a world where gender and sexuality can be more fluid, more playful, and can exist outside of such explicit sorting between one category or the other. Inside the testimony continued. The youngest to speak was Victoria Johnson, who was accompanied by her mother, Davina. I was a proud mother of a son and a daughter. And within the last year, I became a proud mother of a daughter and a daughter. Then on the other hand, uh, you had parents who talked about con concerns over their children being forced to accept these changes as the new norm. Um, I experienced firsthand the kind of harassment that children get from their peers. Your coach? Excuse, Excuse me, sir. Like Excuse me, sir. It's not your turn. Keep away from my kids. Human rights for our children. Like God. Them on new it's the evil. Gender identity. Evil. Evil. Thirteen seconds after the gun sounds, the fastest 3A girls in the state cross the finish line of the 100-meter run. Haynes's Natafon Wengyat is among them, but Wengyat's story is different than any other runner at the state championships. She was born a male. It is not fair and it is not right for our female athletes, and we have a responsibility to protect our, our girls that have worked really hard, that are working. You know, and if a person feels that they are born in the wrong body, who are we to tell them that they are not? What we need to do as loving and caring and supportive citizens of this whole world is to provide an opportunity and a solution, and that starts at a really young age. And we have that opportunity and solution. That comes with our line, that comes with our clothing. Well, a school sparking outrage for calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses to classmates. A teacher at the elementary school in Southern California banning the Bible notes like these during lunch saying there should be a separation of church and state. A sheriff's deputy even showed up at the boy's house and told him and his mom to stop because someone might get offended. Well, this video is sparking outrage in the northwest suburbs. A business owner in diapers promoting a new adult baby store in Mount Prospect. You know, they're not having sex with their, their diapers on. They're, they're having people feed them and act like a baby. It's a business that many people find at best is tasteful but that is legal. Displaying a five and a half foot rocking horse, a seven foot crib, an oversized high chair, and an adult sized playpen. Things for people to come and play, take pictures. It's hard for us to swallow uh, in this community. The village attorney says it has no legal basis to deny it. I have no words for that story. All right, that was Audrina B. just from WBB. We're in South London at a pop-up restaurant called Bunyadi. But unlike most restaurants, this restaurant doesn't require you to wear any clothes. Let's eat. Hello, I'm Ignacio, the architect and manager of the Buniari London, a restaurant where everything is naked. I'm going to try to put the pieces here together. In Europe, okay, in Europe, they just opened up a restaurant where you can go eat without having any clothes on and you're not allowed to bring your cell phone in. So everybody eating in this restaurant is naked. Now it may sound crazy to you, but there's 44,000, this says 29, it's wrong. As of today, there's 44,000 people 
on a waiting list to go eat at this restaurant that, I mean. And so the fact that we now go back to people eating naked with no cell phones, it's basically like we evolved and then we went back to Adam and Eve at the start of time again. How can it be the height of culture that we're back to Adam and Eve? L.A. singer Christina Grimmie has died after being shot in Florida last night. She had just finished a show in Orlando. And now to the United States, where many cities across the nation have seen a rise in violent crimes this year. News out of Florida continues now. It is now officially the worst mass shooting in American history. A man with an assault rifle stormed an Orlando nightclub. Police say at least 50 people are dead. Look at that. They're shooting back and forth. Here it comes. Oh my God, they're all shooting back and forth. People, you know, shocked that something like this was happened here in uh, the United States. But they are saying that uh, Mateen, they're calling him an Islamic State fighter now. They're claiming him as one of their own. I've been here for 16 years and nothing like this has been so extreme. It's insane. It's just mind blowing. Like watching the waves come up yesterday was just out of control. It's as big as I've seen it for 20 years, mate. At Cronulla last night. The waterfront restaurant was swallowed up by the massive swell. And then got a show. Sea level restaurant living up to its name as giant waves washed through the glass windows. We've been here for 19 years and we've had some higher seas before but it's never actually come up through the windows. The staff scrambled to move to higher ground. Mopping up the mess proved pointless as the tide continued to rise. <laughs> South Cronulla wasn't spared, Zimzala Cafe engulfed. Hot in the wind, the tide, the waves all joined forces to slice away at the cliff edge, changing this part of the coastline forever. It's a picture best painted by Google Earth before the weekend storm and after the northern beaches in their very own disappearing act. today. This is a once in a lifetime weather event here in Launceston. I can't explain to you enough just how loud this is here. You might be able to hear it, but the roar is deafening. It's just like thunder non-stop. It was a startling wake-up call across Southern California. People still talking huh. about it now. A magnitude 5.2 earthquake hit just after one this morning, about 13 miles north, northwest of Borrego Springs. To me, it was strong. I felt like as if everything was just moving. And I was, just, I was really freaked out. I've never felt one that, that intense, I guess. There was also that 6.1 quake that rocked Nicaragua yesterday. Seismologists insist these events are unrelated. A mystery tonight in a Blue Springs community. Neighbors there trying to figure out what's causing loud explosions throughout the day. 41 Action News reporter Brian Abel in Blue Springs today as those mysterious blasts continue. It's a story you'll see only right here on 41. Sometimes it shakes the house. Mysterious explosions. After we aired this story Wednesday about loud, sometimes violent, explosion like sounds near Highway 7, we received more calls, tweets, and emails from viewers like Patty Soulsberg. And then I saw your story at 6 o'clock and was thinking the same thing as the people that you interviewed. She says she hears the same house rattling explosions.